Thanks, guys, everyone, for joining in. I'm sure you're, you would have heard of LifeSite from our previous emails or you would have followed our social media. And that's why you're here today to learn more about our platform uh, and how we are trying to enable uh, even Fortune 500 companies for their measurements. So uh, today we're going to focus also on a lot about uh, how you can maximize all of your media buying strategies and planning and all that campaigns and budgets that you're planning to allocate for the next two months, especially for the Black Friday, Cyber Monday season. Uh, this is something which every person uh, across the world, especially in e-commerce and retail, is looking forward. And there's going to be a ton of budgets uh, which is going to be planned and spent across to make sure you have a lot of customers knocking your doors and also purchasing from you. So with that, uh, I would love to introduce you guys today to Shubham and Deepak. Uh, Shubham and Deepak both are from LifeSet. Uh, Shubham is a mixed marketing, marketing mixed modeling expert. Deepak is a multi-touch attribution and the attribution expert at LifeSet. So they will be talking more about uh, these concepts and also how we as LifeSet uh, are solving these issues for you. If you are a media buyer today or if you are an advertiser today, there is daily things that you do which might be looking back into your campaigns looking at what campaigns are really driving me uh, the money home right uh, what channels are really helping me uh, provide that kind of right relevant traffic coming into my website uh, what kind of creative mix is really helping me create brand awareness or primarily also you know give me more orders uh, and uh, while all of is all of this has been sorted out on a daily basis by, uh, say, a performance marketer, uh, a CMO sits with a lot of data scientists also helping him out by putting in data from different churches that can be both, both online, that can be offline, uh, or also even from competitors or external factors, right? And that's where a uh, lot of uh, uh, modeling concepts come into power come into play where uh, traditional modeling was all about until now uh, you know streamlining all of that data a lot of resources being spent on providing the data for modeling uh, we are going to change we are which we're already changing that in life set and we'll show you how we're doing that and uh, how can a marketing mix model become better it's through primarily doing uh, incremental, uh, incremental experiments and let it predict better uh, for your business and for your KPIs, right? So with that, uh, one common thing that we all can agree upon right now is we no more are in a, are in a funnel journey of customer. Uh, they might end up, at, they might end up finding your, uh, you know, e-commerce business, say on Instagram, uh, and then. Uh, they might look look back uh, uh, on a Google ad that you might throw at them, uh, or they might find you from an influencer, right? Or somebody would have referred you, uh, or referred that product for you, right? So in the end, we're looking at uh, uh, customer decision making being very connected in nature at different touch points from the last from the first click to the last click. So. Uh, What's really important to understand now is how do you map uh, uh, when is the customer knocking at your doors? When is the customer abandoning your products? When is the customer purchasing from you, right? And when is he purchasing from you again, right? So these are all important questions for you as a marketer to ask so that you know you're optimizing your campaigns and your customer experience accordingly. Uh, and we will show you how you can do that, right? Uh, two, uh, the whole measurement landscape has changed in the past few years. With mobiles coming in, ID-based measurements, tracking became easier, right? But uh, with from the past three years, we have seen a lot of uh, you know, changes happening in the world uh, that can be from iOS 14, iOS 17, ATT coming into play, and then we are also seeing Google uh, confirming their deprecation of cookies. So moving on, it becomes really important to rely on uh, models and mo measurement model models 
which are independent of all of these problems and is actually sitting with all of your data to be able to provide you the best outcomes from your marketing campaigns, right? And that's where uh, marketing mix modeling comes back, right? And with with the availability of technology with us today, the power of how you can do modeling in today's age is something which is of uh, like gold, right? That which is really available for advertisers to get today because that wasn't available even you talk about 30 years back, right? So uh, we at LifeSet, we have worked with a lot of Fortune 500 brands. Uh, we've helped them uh, take decisions on those six-figure, seven-figure uh, ad budgets and enable them to put their money in the right places uh, to make sure that they get the right outcome. So with that, I would love to give the stage to Deepak, who will speak more about LifeSet measure and then touch upon attribution. Sure, thanks a lot, Ashish. Uh, so I guess the first thing is, you know, what exactly is LifeSite Measure, right? Measure is a privately first marketing measurement suite that lets you accurately measure the impact of your media spend and validate your ad strategy, right? I mean, the why part of things is quite simple. As a marketer, I face multiple challenges right now. One is optimizing my ad spend. Uh, the other is Apple taking away a lot of the data that my ad platforms could be using to track my campaigns. I know that in-platform reporting is inaccurate and it doesn't really line up with my uh, store numbers. Uh, IDs and cookie signals are weakening, and I also cannot map out my customer journeys virtually, right? It's not easy to do this. Um, so, I mean, those are the main challenges that I face, and this is something that like said, Measure helps you overcome, right? Now, the way we do this is, uh, it's basically a three-pronged approach. The first is multitask attribution, or your day-to-day -day decision making. Now, of course, this is per industry standards, right? You get to monitor your uh, rewards and cap values for your campaigns. You get to drill down all the way up to uh, your ad level through ad groups as well, right? Um, the idea is this lets you develop, you know, hypotheses to test with experiments, right? With these two are incrementality testing piece. Uh, these let you validate your experiments that you can run on your ad channels using LifeSite. And finally, to cover the gaps of multi-touch attribution, we also have MM, that's our marketing mix modeling. This is used to make, you know, um, rather advanced KPI predictions and also budget allocations, as you'll see uh, soon in the demo, right? Both MTA and incremental testing pieces can be used to calibrate the MM models that we develop on the platform as well. So they all link together quite nicely here. Now, let's start off with multi-test attribution. I'll cover a little bit about what we do here before jumping to a platform demo. The linear, the linear MTA uh, model is actually quite useful when you want to give credit to multiple channels that a customer interact with before converting, right? So a simple example here is, if a customer sees your ad on social media, then visits your website, doesn't purchase, uh, reads an email from you a while later and then converts, the linear, the linear attribution model would credit each of these channels with 50% of the conversion, right? It's such a great way to get around some of the disadvantages we, we see when, when using a single credit system like first tax or after, right? I think those days are over when you use just one uh, view like that. I mean, having said that, there's no, you know, there's no perfect attribution model. Um, it all depends on the lens through which you want to view your data, right? And like it offers quite a few attribution models here, right? But let's talk about some of the benefits of multi-test attribution. We, we can see that in the next slide. I mean, one, one big benefit is you actually get to see how much each channel actually contributed towards converting a customer, right? You get to see the stages of a customer journey. Um, I mean, it's... Uh, all the different touch points that you user interact with before they converted, you get to see the pages, you get to see the credit that we assigned to the pages as well. And of course, because of the small data attribution, we automatically take into account uh, longer and shorter journeys, right? Uh, we, we assign fraction credit where it's necessary, and this actually helps you understand the journey the customers take uh, on your brand on the way to a conversion, right? Uh, now, all this is mostly because customer journeys are quite complex these days, just as Rashid mentioned. So maybe now we can jump into the demo itself. So this is a look at the 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 next attribution dashboard. Of course, the first thing we select is the date filter. So I'd like to see my attribution data say for September fourth to seventh in this case. Uh, the next thing I do is I actually select the model, right? The the perspective through which I want to look at my 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 store data, right? The attribution model itself. Here I've selected uh, a linear multi-test model. We also give you the options of first touch and last touch if you if you would really like to use them. But we also offer uh, models like U-shape, which is positional, and time decay. 
um, the idea of a time decay model is you know we give more credit to the um, to the test points right before a purchase or a conversion event and lower weightage to the ones that go farther back in time right a lot of these models you would you i mean as you may know are uh, are being deprecated or are already deprecated by ga4 in favor of their own data driven attribution but we believe it's quite important for you to be able to view the data through which model you want and all and all these are role based uh, attribution models so it's quite transparent as well how we assign credit right uh, the next piece here is of course our attribution window right so of course it's up to you to decide what kind of window you want if you feel like a shorter more aggressive attribution window uh, we 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 give you the flexibility to choose that or you can choose a lifetime uh, window which is what we recommend right to capture all the different um, channels that user may have interacted with any time before a, a conversion event right starting with the overview matrix you can see most of them are split between total as well as new customer the idea here is we 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 want to let you see how many new customers you're bringing to your website as well not just you know um turn the thing customer base you can see that for our total attribute revenue split by total and new customer we have our ROAS values as well split by total as well as new new customer same with your blended cac numbers and your new customer acquisition costs okay uh moving on let's see where i guess the value of company uh, like solution like this pops up uh this is all mocked up data but let's take a look at the google example right so for this time window here september 4th to 7th we are seeing that google is responsible for uh, just under 1140 purchases it fraction here because we've assigned uh, a multi test linear model so fractional credit is possible so you can see the number of purchases that we attributing to google uh, the conversion value is just over 1.8 uh million singapore dollars and here you can see a comparison between what google's reporting as a return on ad spend 2.33 versus what we are uh, reporting as a return on ad spend so in this case rather rarely uh google is under attributing um towards their platform right they're saying that the ROAS is 2.3 whereas we are saying it's actually much higher right i mean of course with real data you would see the actual numbers being um quite different right uh typically we find the channels over report but in this case we're seeing that it's under-reporting, right? Which is also all right. And of course, we give you the actual customer acquisition cost, the new customer acquisition cost as well, along with the total spend for that channel. Uh, now, it's important to note because of mocked up data, these values are rather high, but they usually, I mean, hopefully they never will be this high for your brand, right? Um, and of course, the 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 value that you see of a channel was, they come directly from the ad channel itself. So like I said, the four, five, five ad channels are one click integration. Your uh, Facebook, Google, or TikTok, Pinterest, and Snapchat. Right. Once we have that, let us move on to I guess uh, another view where we can actually drill down not just at the channel level, we can go all the way up to the ad level. So the idea here is you get to see all the different campaigns, uh, ad sets, and ads that, that are part of a channel, and we use the same attribution numbers at these levels as well. Right. So you can see here for this campaign, I'm actually able to determine uh, what the channel is reporting as revenue and what life size reports are the uh, the actual revenue this is because we have a pixel on the on the store and this lets us capture all the store landings and assign credit uh, wherever required right so the idea here is to give you this comparison between what channel reports and what we are reporting as the the true ROAS right we also give you a handy bubble chart for you to be able to see each channel performance at a glance right so here you can see that the average uh, return on spend is 3.64 with um, with with Google here doing quite well with a, with with the reported ROAS of 5.67, the bubble of course gives you the 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 actual spend for this channel, so it's a little larger than the rest. And we also give you the total conversion method. We get to the customer journeys view. The idea here is we give you a visual representation of the different journeys that a customer takes on your website, right? So in this case, you can see that the people who interacted with an active touch point are responsible for a total of twelve thousand nine hundred dollars of uh, purchase. Right, and you can see that four thousand dollars of which happened right after the first touch point, okay, and seven thousand three hundred ninety-five dollars come in after two touch points with Axio, and so on and so forth. So we give you the entire journey for for any any given touch point on your on your store, right? That's the idea of you like this. Of course, these can get quite complex, but these complex journeys only indicate the kind of interactions that a customer uh, goes through before converting in your store, right? And the great way to view that kind of data as well. Now, of course, like I mentioned before, I mean, we keep the models quite transparent as well. So you can see that in our orders tab, the idea here is we'll actually tell you how we're assigning credit to each 
order that happens in the filter that you select in the 8th October, October 11th, 17th. You can see that for every single order, we'll, we'll actually tell you which which channels are actually, you know, um, contributing toward that purchase. And again, all this is based on the attribution model that you select, and uh, as well as the attribution window. There's no there's no black box for you to trust. Rather, you get to see the data and uh, basically check out the kind of credit that we're signing to each channel. What you are seeing on your screen right now is the attribution is tech in marketing measurement. So we all know that marketing measurement is is a very challenging job. There is no one source of truth. Hence, uh, like increasingly multiple um, methodologies are used to do as accurate as possible attribution. So in, in that line, uh, there are, you can say that uh, attribution techniques can be divided into four parts, starting with experiments, tracking, modeling, and surveys. And uh, there are multiple tools within that, uh, uh, depending on the level of sophistication. Uh, we at LifeSight believe that uh, there should be a suit of techniques which should be used. And that's why uh, we provide at least one technique uh, in each of these categories, starting from um, incrementality experiments where we uh, support audience split testing, geo, uh, geo experiment, experiments and smart experiments and A-B testing. Then in the tech tracking, as you have already seen that uh, Deepak has demonstrated all our uh, attribution models. Then in modeling, uh, we have marketing mix modeling and we are uh, soon, very soon coming with causal inference as well. Uh, also, uh, the next in line uh, is the post-purchase surveys, which is a very sound tool for attribution. So, uh, starting with a uh, marketing mix modeling, what marketing mix modeling is that uh, here we do not require any sort of tracking. You don't have to provide any uh, customer IDs or uh, your like order level attribution or in campaign level attribution. In marketing mix modeling, what what needed is your historical ad spend data and your historical KPI data which uh, on which we can run uh, uh, correlation analysis or uh, using machine learning techniques to find out which of your ad channel uh, has performed better and which hasn't uh, performed and uh, what is the revenue or what is the share of the KPI, any KPI, be it number of orders, application installs, your store visits are coming via which channel totally on the basis of the patterns in your historical data. And along with that, uh, MMM can also account for the factors like uh, one, the channels like offline channels, which are uh, generally very difficult to be attributed. Second, it could account for your organic marketing. It could account for your uh, any other contextual variables, uh, be it, uh, let's say, macroeconomic variables or internal variables like some discount coupons you loaned, some products you launched. It could account for all of that while evaluating the performance of ad channels. Uh, so yeah, uh, using that, then we can build the model and predict the outcomes. So yes, marketing or mixed modeling shows impact and how it does is that uh, first it takes into account all your internal and external variables, then use the sound statistical techniques uh, to link that data or run over 3000 models on that iterative models on that, and then come up with a model which can be used to evaluate the performance of ad spend. and not just the descriptive evaluation, but it also prescribes you things like how you can optimize your budgets, how uh, just by reorganizing your current budgets, you can uh, increase the return you are getting and how if you want to target a particular or ROAS or if you want to target, uh, target a particular cost per order, how you can achieve that by increasing or decreasing your spends in particular channels. And yes, so uh, as it, attribution is becoming difficult in a way of uh, like uh, you are, you might not be able to track uh, due to privacy concerns or there might there are various channels or as media mix is getting complex. There are offline channels, there are online channels, or uh, there is affiliate marketing, influencer marketing. So uh, as the mix becomes larger, uh, it becomes difficult to do everything by uh, the general techniques of attribution. So hence, uh, marketing mix modeling is gaining its space again. And many top uh, brands has voiced uh, in its favor. And uh, now with the tools like LifeSite, wherein uh, we provide uh, those tools available at very democratized level that uh, those are cell serve tools and uh, anyone can build the model in, in within a quick time. And that remains on always like with your, your new data, it, get, it, it keeps getting uh, refreshed. And uh, you don't have to hire very uh, specialized agencies in order to do that. And you don't have to sp spend a lot of amount in order to build an MMA model. With that, even the medium and small size uh, brands are uh, using MMA models nowadays. And uh, we at LifeSite support that. Then uh, 
until now like traditional approach to mmm as i was telling it is very time consuming it requires lots of manual modeling and you need to like commission and uh, study proper study or to build an mmm model it would take somewhere around a quarter to two quarters then you get an mmm model and by then uh, the those findings may not remain relevant and it is very difficult to refresh those findings in uh, on uh, in contrast to that modern approach to mar- uh, marketing mix modeling is mostly automated data ingestion and using uh, like uh, advanced machine learning technologies to build the model mm-hmm. then reducing human bias by using machine learning and then uh, the most important is to be able to frequently uh, update that models like marketing scenarios uh, changes very quickly uh, with the seasons coming up with the holidays coming up uh, and with the like new new type of uh, sources of advertising coming up so these keep changing so your model should also be uh, getting up- upgraded very frequently so that you also know that what channel is performing and what channel is not performing and accordingly you can readjust your budgets so life site is in that direction that uh, we use the modern techniques to provide a very sound mmm tool now we'll go to uh, the demonstration of our marketing mix um, modeling tool platform where we have built a cell serve platform and uh, which can be used to build the mmm model yeah uh, so uh, this is the page uh, of life site mmm model within its major module so here what you are seeing is an a screen for a particular let's say for a particular brand and all the models which the brand has built are available here and what we report is the name of the model status whether it's a success or fail or uh, basically on what kpi it is built or uh, you can build an any number of mmm models uh, using any kpi you want you want to maximize your orders you want to maximize your revenue you you may want to maximize let's say the registration you are getting on website or the uh, visits you are getting to your website so any kpi can be maximized uh, and for for each kpi a, a mmm model can be built now we uh, will go into one of the model to see uh, like what are the insights uh, which we show and uh, how like we'll, we are not going into the building mmm model part but that's also a very straightforward process at life site within now uh, within let's say one hour you can build an uh, mmm model which would have run over 3000 iteration and show you the findings so first page which you are seeing here is first is the confidence level so uh, we use that uh, as, as i mentioned we run several iterations and then report you the best model so here you can see that it is having a 90 uh, more than 90% accuracy then the overview part where you can visualize the input data to to the mmm so you have put up aggregated uh, spends and the total kpi so you can visualize that uh, for example how the twitter spend is uh, varying in last two years and uh, last one year and uh, how revenue are changing along with that so there is uh, this is all the input data only and same has been tabulated here then we see the insights what we see first is uh, that uh, this is your actual revenue which you provided to uh, the life sites platform and then we build the model on that and using the model we are able to predict uh, the same kpi and you can see that they are very closely aligned that's why the accuracy is higher and that tells that this model can be consumed for gaining more insights and to do the future forecast then coming on to the next chart is the share of spend versus revenue with total ROAS so this tells you that which channel is performing how much how much share of your revenue or how much share of your orders is coming from which channel and what is the ROAS or CPA in that process so here it is telling that you are spending around 73% in google and getting around now 70% in return with a ROAS of 6.11 but uh, if you see that there are channels which are performing better than that for example tiktok or uh, snapchat for that matter where the ROAS is quite high but you are investing very low in that so it might make sense to reduce some of your google spend and uh, investing in the other channels the same way uh, this is a very interesting chart uh, incremental revenue over base so in this chart you are able to see that uh, there is always always a baseline business you are getting uh, from your direct channels uh, be it through your uh, brand equity be it through uh, word of mouth be it through the product pricing changes or innovative products you are launching from any unknown factors or known factors other than paid marketing factors how much revenue you are getting so this a uh, gray color here denotes that a uh, baseline revenue and on top of that what paid marketing channels are bringing to you uh, every month 
and the same has been tabulated here so it tells that from direct sources you are getting around 22.5% uh, of revenue and on top of that google is bringing you 54% 50, uh, of the revenue with a ROAS of 6.11 and let's say facebook is bringing uh, 14% of revenue with a ROAS of 6.67 but there are channels which are which are having higher ROAS but their contribution is lower because uh, there is a lower spend on them the same way we we saw in the MTA as well uh, we also present ROAS analysis and uh, in MMM as well where in one view you are able to see what is ROAS of different channel uh, what is revenue you are getting from them and what is the spend size over there so the channels which are right side of this uh, vertical line are performing better uh, but if they are very uh, low uh, low in the curve that means you can increase the spend on that to basically lead a higher revenue this is the descriptive insights you get but we also have one module which is budget optimizer module which is prescriptive in nature so it tells you that for your current spend which is for in this particular case 103k dollars uh, how you can optimize this budget in order to uh, gain in higher revenue so here uh, mmm suggests that uh, you can increase your tiktok spend by almost 400 percent you can increase your snapchat uh, spend by 400 percent uh, and you can reduce your facebook spend by 50 percent in order to achieve a uh, the maximum possible return at the same level of spend and uh, the same has been tabulated here if you see uh, these are your current spends with total spend of 103 uh, okay, thousand dollars then uh, these are the recommended budget with the same total budget and doing that you would be able to increase your incremental revenue which you are getting from these paid marketing platforms from 350k 3k to 623k and your ROAS in that process would improve from 3.4 to 6 uh, to almost six so uh this this is a very uh like a, a very nice uh, prescription that just by rearranging your budget you can uh, target a higher revenue but uh, there is also possibility that uh, you, you may not have that much money uh, to invest uh, in the next season in the coming month or in the coming week uh then what you do let's say your weekly budget you want to reduce by 10 percent uh, in the coming cycle then uh, mmm would suggest you that where you should be reducing that budget and uh, uh, in which platforms you should be investing and uh, how you would be uh, getting the maximum return and and in order to suggest that mmm takes into account uh, obviously the model it has built based on your historical data and also the saturation level of each curve for example here you are seeing uh, let's say for a uh, google for example or we can take some uh, other channel uh, facebook for that matter so it is uh, white recommended to reduce in facebook because you are seeing that uh, this is the uh, current level of spend in facebook but you, uh, we uh, using your data it mmm has observed that facebook is already plateauing for you so with incremental spend in facebook you are not getting uh, the enough incremental revenue that's why uh, mmm is suggesting to reduce in uh, facebook so in the scenario which we tried the less than um, reducing the budget by 10 percent you are seeing that uh, without uh, affecting your revenue even uh, even by reducing your budget uh, you are able to increase your incremental revenue just by readjusting your current budgets and your ROAS in that process is improving in, from 3.4 to 5.6. So similarly, you could try different scenarios. You could target in higher ROAS and, and see what is optimum distribution for that and then make decisions accordingly. And it's not that uh, you made decision and it's done. Uh, with LifeSite's MMM model, uh, it would keep getting refreshed every week with the new data coming in and you would be able to validate the decisions you have made and whether they hold true now or you may have to like uh, redesign your uh, model or you have to make or uh, change your decisions. Thanks, Shobhan. Thanks, Vipak. Uh, so everyone, uh, just to end this demo, there's a one key thing that we like to tell everyone. Uh, files for some of you marketing mix model can be new or you would have tried out in some form of fashion today you would have learned that you need to move to the modern way of uh, doing marketing mix modeling and for those of you who have been doing attribution it's very important to understand that uh, that is you know is key for your daily you know optimization for your weekly optimizations it will help you understand uh, each channel's uh, contribution to conversion 
and it's very short term in nature, right? While marketing mix modeling really helps you plan for a longer term, longer season uh, when it comes to uh, allocating your budget or optimizing your current budget or reallocating your budgets. And eventually, while you do that and while you run your campaigns and experiments uh, that may be to different sets of customers or different sets of locations, you would be able to understand how uh, and when you need to really stop those budgets or you need to realign so that you in, you are investing in those campaigns and channels which is really giving you that incremental factor to uh, it might be your orders, it might be your app install or it, may, it might be on your revenue. So with that, uh, we'd love to end this session uh, with one last note that uh, we are here in LifeSet to make sure your every marketing dollar uh, yields you the right profits uh, at the end. Uh, and we're here to do that by not suggesting you that multi tier distribution is the best thing or marketing mix model is the best thing. But it's important to for you to make sure that you you rely on both for each, each, each own use cases and you do pretty much incremental experiments to make sure you're attributing better and you're modeling better and make sure you are a holistic uh, you know, modern marketer moving forward, and uh, you're also combating a lot of privacy challenges uh, and its effect on your measurements while doing this. So, with that, uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining in today. Uh, hope you love this demo. And if you would love uh, to talk to our experts, so feel free to go to lifestyle.io slash demo, and we'll be happy to understand more about your issues and your challenges and solve for you with our measurement suit. So thank you so much. Uh, have a good day, have a great night, have a great week.